Hey you, what is up? How's it going? This is Papa Python from cleverprogrammer.com. I also go by Kazi, so you can call me whichever one you want. Today marks day two of the video challenge I'm doing, which is gonna be a 30 day video challenge. Now, if you wanna use this time to go along with me and do a writing challenge or a coding challenge every morning or every day, then you should do so. With that said, today I wanna to talk about this really cool concept. I had this epiphany a few days ago, and um, at, not an epiphany, but something that kind of stuck in my mind, and maybe you'll like it, so I'm, I wanna just share it with you. So there's this thing uh, called failure that we might be familiar with in our life, all right? Now, what is failure? Let's talk about failure. Failure oftentimes means that you wanted to do something, but it didn't happen. You wanted to set yourself up to start a business and make it successful, but it didn't happen and it didn't become successful. So you go ahead and you call that uh, business a failure, right? So it'd be like, your business was a bust. So I don't have a red marker, but I'm just gonna use a purple marker and just say like, the business idea failed. And then we can have more types of failure. So we can have a business failing. We can have, oh, we failed to become a developer or failed to learn to code. So it's like coding, code, you know, that's right here. Python, I'm a failure. So I can keep going down the list, but we have this idea of failure and failure is actually a really, really bad thing. But here's what I want you to think about. So think about anything in your life that you have gotten good at. Anything that you have gotten good at. So it could be music, it could be your ability to pen tap, it could be your ability to juggle or play soccer or basketball or volleyball, whatever it may be for you, video games, something that you got good at. Let me ask you a question. How many times did you fail? So that's my question to you is how many times did you actually fail in the thing that you got good at? So I'm willing to say that if you were to look at anything you got good at, anything you consider yourself to be improved at or good at. And then I want you to compare it to something you suck at, something you're not very good at. So for example, I'm not very good at basketball. I'm really bad at basketball. Okay, so I'm gonna write down basketball here. I'm really bad at basketball. But I am a lot better at table tennis. What is the difference between basketball and table tennis? Well, why am I much better at table tennis and then I'm really bad at basketball? The only thing that's in between these two that differentiates them is that I have actually failed a lot more times in table tennis than I have in basketball. I haven't taken enough shots to fail in a lot of shots or miss a lot of shots. But in table tennis, I have taken lots and lots and lots of L's and lots and lots of failures. What is going on here? Well, the point is this, anything that you are actually good at, you have failed at it more times than the thing that you suck at. So what does that actually mean? What that actually means is that this thing that we hate and despise, and a lot of people have this thing called fear of failure, which, you know, most people do. We hate this thing. It's a bad thing, right? It's a bad thing. We don't like it. I, don't, I can't make a thumbs down sign, so I'm gonna make a arrow down. We hate this thing. It's a terrible thing. It's a bad thing. It's kind of like a disease for us, except the more of this we have, the more of success we have in the other things that we do in life, all right? If you fail a lot in coding, like a lot of people watch my coding and they're like, oh my God, Kazi, you know, you're so, you're so good at, you're so good at this. Or they'll look at somebody else who's coding and they'll be like, I can never be the software developer or that good. Really all that person did is fail a lot more times than you did, right? I failed a lot more times, maybe, the, you know, if depending on what your skill set is in coding, but I probably failed a lot more times than you. And that's why I am a little bit better at coding. But you might have failed a lot more times at something else in life and you can kick my ass at that thing. 
So it all comes down to where we have failed more. That's almost always what you'll find is a common denominator. Yet we hate this idea. Yet we hate this thing. Except the path to success in any of these things, any of the things that you actually want to do. And um, in, in terms of your development coding as well, you got to go through this beautiful thing called failure and a lot of it, a lot of it. With that said, how can we go ahead and how, what, so what's the next logical step? What is the next step? What should we do? How should we look at failure? Well, here's how I look at it. You have to think about the things you have control over and things that you actually don't have that much control over. All right. And then you got to control the things that you have control over. So for example, you know, if you're driving a car and your car breaks down and you're in the middle of the highway, most people's reaction is getting extremely stressed and they're freaking out and they're trying to control everything. And they are, they start getting super angry. You know, they'll be like, how long will it take for you to get here, to get me out of here? You know, they'll call the towing service, towing company, and that company might say, oh, it's going to take us two hours. And they're just so angry and they're fuming. And then while that company is coming, they're calling their friends and they're just venting. Whereas you could just choose to chill in those two hours, listen to a book, take a nap, call a friend and actually just talk about random stuff, fun stuff because you're like, oh, I just got two free hours or watch a movie in that time. I've done all of those things. I've been in those really bad situations, especially with the car. And it's just a matter of what you focus on and you just got to focus on the things you can control. There's certain things you can't control. So if I can't control how quickly the towing company can come, it's not worth my time or energy to get super passionate about that. What is that towing company, man? Like, oh, I got to get going. It adds more stress, but stress is good. I love stress. I get very worked up a lot of the times. I have a quick temper as well. But the problem is that I don't want to waste it on something I cannot control. All right. So when it comes to our success in life, you people, there's, there's this thing called um, result. This is what everybody's focus is on. And this is what we love. What are results at the gym? It means a six pack. If you talk about coding, this means building an app. app with Python or it could be job as a developer. If we look at this, these are the things that we actually pay attention to and we actually want. It's the results. We want a job as a developer. We want to make an app. We want to get that shredded six pack physique. But what do we have to go through that's pretty much undeniable to get these results? We have to go through failure. The more you fail at the gym, the closer you'll get to getting a six pack. The more you fail at building an app with Python, the closer you'll become to this goal of building an app with Python. The more times you apply and fail to get a job as a developer, the more likely you'll be to get a job as a developer yet. And then on the other hand, if we just focus on the results every day, you'll come in and you'll just lift up your shirt. You won't see a six pack in the mirror. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to build, you're going to try to build the app. And once you can't build it, and then you try to just focus on the result, you're going to get discouraged. Same thing with trying to get a job. You don't get a job. You're going to feel extremely what discouraged. So if we just focus on the results, we set ourselves up to always be disappointed and that's one. So happy, it costs you your happiness. But the second thing it costs you is actually you don't get the result. You try a few times, you don't get the result, you stop. All right. So you can't focus on the results. See, the reason why I fail so much at table tennis is because I don't care about the freaking result. I don't care about winning the game. I don't care about some kind of crazy winning the best competition. I care about the game. I care about just playing it over and over again. I just care about that feeling I get like, pa, pa, pa. like I just love how it feels, right? Or I just love how chess feels or how soccer feels. And I can just keep going in that game. So coming back to this, if we, instead of falling in love with results, if we fell in love with failure, what would things look like? Now I know it's a weird concept to think about, but what will things look like if we instead fall in love with failure? So every day you look at, did I actually fail today? Right? 
Did I actually hit the gym and fail the goals? Good, all right? That means I'm actually improving. You wanna look at, did I try that business opportunity I said I was gonna try and failed at it? Good, because if you focus on failure, you're bound to go in the direction you wanna go. That's one. Two, you are guaranteed to stay happy because what's worse than failure to normal people? Nothing. Failure is the ultimate quote unquote low. So when you have your ultimate low as a thing that actually gives you a high and you get excited about, now you're, you're gonna be fucking happy in almost any given situation. And any kind of result you get is just a cherry on top. Still stay focused on your goals. I'm not telling you not to stay focused on your goals. I'm not telling you to sell yourself short or have a smaller goal. What I am saying is shift your focus and fall in love with the right thing. The thing that you call ugly is actually the most beautiful thing you can have on the planet. And the thing you're chasing after is a freaking siren. If you look up in Greek mythology, what a siren is, is these beautiful, beautiful uh, female singers, um, and they will lure you with, your, with their voice. And once you go, it's actually not the most beautiful female singer, it's actually a freaking demon that will destroy your life and kill you and murder you. So results, you should look at them like sirens in Greek mythology. All right, that's what these are. So set your results, set your goals of what you want, but then forget about that shit. Then fall in love with failure. Count how many times have you failed, okay? When I wanted to start Clever Programmer, I wanted to start this, I remember talking to my friend and I remember this call. It was two, roughly almost three years ago now. I think it was 2015, around October or December or something like that. And I called them and I said, uh, yo, or actually went in 2016, 2016 probably. I called him and I said, I remember I said, I want to fail. I want to, I want to work on a business and I want to fail as many times. I want to fail five times in the next one month. I want to fail five business ideas in the next one month. So what does that do? Once my focus is on failure in the next one month, now I'm not focused on being perfectionist. Now I'm not focused on it being great or incredible. Now I'm not focused on having these crazy expectations. It's gonna be amazing. So all that weight is actually gone. I start taking action fast right away, okay? Because I'm trying to get to my failures, man. I'm trying to get to my most beautiful failures because I know through the failures alone is the only way I'll be able to succeed. So I'm just trying to get to it faster. I'm just trying to fail fast so then I can get to where I want to go. And through that was what was Clever Programmer was developed. Through that is what I also was working on my chess channel, Chestastic. Through that, actually, I started coding way harder because I wanted to fail in it again and again and again. And it was addicting and it was exciting. And it got me super inspired. And so all the time I would be living in this epic state of feeling excited and feeling like I'm hitting my goals every single day. Whereas when I was just focused on the results, things got depressing very, very, very quickly because as soon as I would not get what I wanted, I was just broken. Most of the times I found falling in love with my results made me lazy, made me slower, made me unhappy, made me actually not get the result off in time. And overall, it I, it's not a way that I find exciting. For me, focusing on failure puts me in this incredible state of feeling gratitude all the time, being happy, being grounded, and coming from that powerful energy where even in the worst moments, I'm happy. So anything on top of that is just a bonus and it's cherry on top. So you can see what that level of energy will do to your work ethic, will do to the quality of your work, will do to the quantity of your work, will do to the effectiveness of yourself and your life and your work. And you can see how that will improve your efficiency. Just having a mindset and that different look in life. This is what I wanted to share with you today. I hope that you got value out of it. I hope that you actually fall in love with the fear of failure. But I do want you to take a second and comment below what is something you're scared of failing at and what is a commitment that you can make today to fall in love with. You can um, 
run with this idea that I had, right? For me, I use it for coding and business. You could use it for something completely different, but what would it be for you? Would you fall in love with the failure of, you know, failing at coding as many times as possible? Would you fall in love with failing at building an app or trying to get a job as a developer as many times as possible or something else? What is it for you? Drop your comment below. I'm going to jump in there, check it out. I'm going to try to respond to as many people as possible. And as always, thank you so much for watching. This is Kazi. I love your face. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.